Man, oh man, guess what? I got some good chicken for you guys today. Rotisserie chicken on the Weber. I got this little attachment, you're gonna like it. Stay tuned for more. Toothpicks. Hey guys we got the whole chicken laid out here i got some seasonings i got some gators breath right here this is some good stuff i got some of this chupacabra i'm gonna show you that is some good stuff for our outer layer we got some mayo i'm gonna pick up mix that with a little bit of cajun seasoning we're gonna put that all over to help the seasoning stick and i'm gonna show you how to do a an injection so we got a stick of butter okay put that in your pan get it all sizzled up get it melted up right there looking good we're gonna put some chicken bouillon in there okay I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of that in there that's gonna give us some good flavor in there okay we're gonna add some more in there in a bit look at this spicy Cajun gator spell oh that's good so we're gonna add about two teaspoons in there get that all mixed up in there yeah that's gonna look good tons of flavor we got some garlic powder put the garlic powder in there I think we'll do about a teaspoon put that in there as well all right then we're going to adjust a little bit, maybe a teaspoon to a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Kind of know what it is. Get that all in there. Swirl it up a little bit. Get it mixed up. Get it going real good. And then, once we got that mixed up, we're going to add about two cups of water. Add that water in there. Get it all in there. That'll give you enough injection to put it through this whole chicken. You might have some leftover um, just for basting purposes. All right. So we got the whole chicken right here. And now we're gonna do some injecting. I got this little trusty injector right here. I don't have to keep, you know, putting the needle in the liquid to fill it up. It works very well, I use it for pork and everything. So let's just go ahead and get it in this injection all up in this chicken. Get it primed up. Mm-hmm. That looks good. We're gonna hit this in the breast, all different parts of the breast. As you see. That gets all that flavor all through that meat. Get that right there. Mm. Get a little more pumpage. That's right. Get in your legs too. Put this injection all over so you can have some of that Cajun seasoning all inside. Wings too. Don't neglect them. Get them all in there. Get it in your wings. Uh oh. Got yeah, a little trouble. All right. There we go. Put it in the wings. Get it in there and watch it puff up. And get it in your thighs too. Don't forget those as well. Get a couple spots in there. Okay. All right. So a couple more shots in the breast. Get them more. I like to season it. So I don't know about you guys. I like seasoning. Put it all in there. All right. I'm gonna get a little more, a couple more spots. I know you're like, man, how much you gonna put in here? Hey, I want this thing bursting with flavor. It's gonna be good. I'm trying to tell you. All right. So I think that's about enough for that. We're gonna take this out, put it in the sink, clean that later. All right, so turn it around so y'all can see that. We're gonna take that right there, save that for later, use it for some basting, put it over here to the side. Let's take some of this um, seasoning we got here. I got my gloves on, so you know I can touch the chicken with one and season it with the other once I get to that point. So the first thing we're gonna do right here is gonna get these little skewers put in here that this is what you put on the rotisserie i don't know exact name for them i'm just calling them little skewers because that's what they are the reason i want to put these on first guys um because i don't want to be fair uh, you know fumbling around with the chicken trying to do the seasoning and then rub all the good seasoning off the chicken trying to put these on later if you get you know get what i mean so get these on here takes a little minute but it's not hard, it's, you know, kind of loosen them, get them stuck in your, your breast and get it stuck in the back. There you go. So you want to, um, I'm going to fold my wings down, get them folded down pretty good. I don't want them flopping out right there. Or you can tie them with some string if you want, however you want to do it. Look, the other one just popped out. I got to fold that, get that, get back under there. Got to fold that under there, get that so it won't move. All right, turn that over. See that? That's how you want it right there. All right. So of course, yeah, I know you're wondering. Get those tightened up. You don't want those to slip. Okay, yep, I didn't forget that. Just tighten those up real good. 
yeah, we're gonna tie the um, legs up, get the legs tied up. But there is no right and wrong way to tie up the legs. I'm just gonna just make a couple knots. However you feel to get it secure, just do it how you want to. I'm pretty sure there's a method out there, but hey, I'm just trying to do what works for me. Get these tied up. That way they won't move on me. Um, some people like to leave them hanging on the grill. Um, I don't want to at this time. Sometimes I do, but we're gonna tie them up for right now. Get those tied up real good. It's looking real nice. Looking real presentable. All right, almost about done here. Maybe one more knot, get it, get it right. Tie those together, yep. That way this is really stay together. So I'm just making up a knot, guys, and not doing a specific. Get you some scissors and cut those ends off. All right, done with those. All right, put those away. So now that I got this on here, I wanna take some of my mayo with my Cajun this season, and this is gonna help my rub stick. I'm gonna put this right here, take some right there, rub it all over the skin. Get it rubbed down real good. Kinda of like how people do their ribs with mustard or they use olive oil sometimes. Um, you put olive oil on here if you don't wanna do the mayo. Um, this is just what I decided to do last minute. I'm kinda of cooking on the fly. Turn that over, hit the other side, cause you want some of that good mayo over there. You want this rub the stick all over your chicken. You want it hitting good. And when I bite into this chicken, I want it to taste the flavors of it. All that Cajun season, the chupacabra rub is good. So let's go ahead and get this glove off, get it thrown in the trash. I'm finished putting that on there. All right, I'm gonna use this other hand to put my season on my bottles. I don't wanna cross contaminate nothing. Okay, go ahead, hit it with this chupacabra poultry seasoning. And I'll put a link to that in the description. All right, so with my one hand, I'm gonna be holding it in the other side. I'm just gonna use that to sprinkle some of this rub on it. Get it all over there, guys. Don't be shy with this. Put it all over your chicken. Hit the sides. Y'all know how I feel about hitting the sides stuff. Even in my brisket videos, my rib videos, I always hit every corner of your piece of meat. You want somebody to bite into this chicken and be like, hey, they didn't miss a spot. Okay, and I know what you're thinking. Look, it's wet on the bottom from that mayo. Some of that rub's gonna come off, but I'm gonna show you guys later. Hey, we're gonna add some more of this rub on once I get it on the grill. If you didn't wanna do this right here, you could do it while it's spinning on the rotisserie, but I wanna hit it first because I want it to sit a little bit. Sprinkle a little more. I told you, be liberal. Don't be shy about it. Mm -hmm. Lots of seasoning. And this is not too salty, guys, so don't worry about this being over salted. You can't find chupacabra rub. Find your own rub that you like. That'll work. Anything, salt, pepper, garlic. Uh, make you up some of that. Put that on here. Any way you want to do it. I'm just showing you how I would do it. And that looks good. All right. Boom. Look at that presentation. And so now we're going to go outside. I'm going to show you what I'm cooking on. Stay tuned for that. All right guys, here it is. The Weber Attachment Only Fire Rotisserie Kit I got off Amazon for your 26 inch kettle. Let's get the fire started. Go ahead and put you some coals on both sides of your Weber kettle. Get those poured in right here for you guys. All right. And these, I'm using hickory coals today from Kingsford. Got a little hickory um, wood chips all in those. All right. Once you got those poured in, you wanna go ahead and get it started. I got the loop flyer I'm using today. Gets it started very fast with this hot air blowing. Or you can use whatever you want, but I choose to use a loop flyer today. All right, and after that, go ahead and get you a drippings pan in there. Get that set up in the middle. It doesn't really fit all the way, but it sits on both of those racks right there, and it's gonna work out just fine for this. You can put some water or some onions in there if you want, but I'm just gonna use it for drippings. All right, get it a little straightened up. Once you got that in, Let's go ahead and get the chicken put in. So I'm gonna insert this all the way to the motor on the end. All right, just like that there. Get my dials notched down tight so it can spin good. Go ahead and get my power on. Make sure everything's going good. All right, so everything should be plugged in. And this does plug into your regular AC outlet. 
there's a start button on the side of that. Yeah, let me find it real quick. There it go. All right, get that started. Easy peasy, guys. Go ahead, like I said, remember I told you about that rub coming off because it was wet on the bottom with that mayonnaise? So we're gonna sprinkle or take this opportunity to get some more rub on the back side of that. Like I said, I don't like to miss any spots with my rub. I like to get it all over and take a look at that. That's gonna be beautiful when it comes out. Look at how it rolls. Easy, guys. You should get you one of these if you don't have. I wanna get this next one called the Rivelator. I've seen some people have it. It's got racks that you, it can spin with a whole bunch of racks or ribs or you put wings on it, whatever you wanna put on it. Well, I'll probably get that next in a later video. So once you got this going right here, my coals are good and gray as you can see in there. Add you a couple wood chunks. I think I got me some pecan right here. Mixed with this little bit of hickory. You can use some mesquite, wherever you want. This is what I choose to use today. And once you got that going, go ahead and put your lid on it. Get it set on there. You want the vent open just a little bit and then check the bottom. Make sure your vents are closed back to where you want it. But it's gonna run about 400 degrees, guys, no lie. It's going to be good and hot, and I think that's good. Wow. Let's take a look at it. It's been a little while. Been rolling for about 45 minutes, guys. 400 degrees. Looking good. That's what I like to see. Now, for the butter. Remember that injection we made? We're going to put that all over this chicken. Get it all over drizzle it on the wings because I like the wings guys as you can see some of my skin busted open um, I guess from the pressure being applied from the wings being tied or maybe it was a cutting out and see um, but that doesn't matter it's all going in the belly anyway you're gonna eat that up I'm trust me I should pick at it but you know that'd be unfair to everybody else but hey I'm the pit master at the house you are too eat whatever you want on this thing all right we got the butter all over there looking good all right take the temperature let's see what it is it's not quite ready yet 140 132 as you see in those breasts deepest parts where you want to take your temp I got my thermopop today that I'm using and this thing I've been having for a couple years it has not failed on me yet 143 look at that how it spins looking real good guys wow mm -mm -mm. that looks wonderful I can't wait to taste this chicken Woo! all right so now I'm just gonna add a couple more chunks of pecan cause they burned out a little bit. Put the pecan in there. That looks, mm, that looks so good guys. Smells good too, I wish you could smell it from here. Put your lid back on and come check it later. All right guys, so I think this chicken is ready. Let's pull out the thermopop. Let's check this temp. 165 in the breast. Okay, deepest part of the breast like I told you. Let's check some other spots too over there 169 that's real good for your breast right there it's going to allow it to be juicy the dark meat you want it to be up to like 174 180 ensure it's cooked i think that's good let's take it off all right guys we got our rotisserie chicken ready to be cut up on this cutting board right here i got this chicken right here it looks so good it smells good I got some savory sides over here, some cabbage and some baked beans. That's going to be good with it. Put whatever you want with it. Let's go ahead and get these skewers off right here. I don't know what they're called. Like I said, just get them off. You want to be able to cut your chicken without those being on. All right, put those in the sink, get them washed up later on. Take you a good knife. We're going to cut a piece of this breast off right here. I'm going to slice with that skin right there. I want to show you. Man, that looks good. When I cut into that, all those flavors that I put in there with that Cajun seasoning just came right up, hit me in the nose. We're gonna cut another slice off because I want two pieces right here. We're gonna put this on this plate, guys. I'm gonna eat this. This is gonna be my plate right here. Look at that. Look at how that flops over. That juice is just all over that glove right there, dripping down, ready to be munched on. We're gonna go ahead and put that right there. All right. All right, that looks so good, guys. I'm telling you, you're not gonna be displeased with this chicken right here. I think I had to do something. Let me go over here, take care of it. Come over here and we're gonna get ready to put this back on the plate. It's gonna look good. Take that piece of meat, go ahead and put that right there by that cabbage. And that's his friend right there. Put his other friend on the plate right there. 
And the guys, I want to cut me a wing off. Me and my daughter, we fight over these wings. There's only two of them. So maybe I can start making two pieces of chicken, two whole chickens next time. Nah, she's just going to get one. Maybe I'll just take two. Put that on your plate right there because I want three pieces of meat because I'm hungry. All right, so turn that around. Guys, don't forget, once you get all that cut up, you don't want to forget these strings back here. Get these strings off right here or this, you know, cooking twine. Take that off. You don't want nobody ingesting that. Get that off there real good. You might have to take a couple cuts. Get that off. Get your other one off. That way you don't have to be biting down. Oh, got some string in my mouth. Already flossing before you finish your food. Get this leg off right here, guys. Find your joint. Cut that leg off. That looks good. I'm not a dark meat person, but everybody else likes dark meat in the house. And if you want to cut your thigh off, you can cut it right there off that backbone, turn it over. There's some other chicken videos I'll show you in my other videos. Just check those out if you want to see how you make a um, cut in the chicken. And look at that plate, guys. Looking good. Wow. All right, guys. Got this plate right here. I want to thank y'all for checking out this video. I appreciate you. Make sure you like, comment, and share. Stay tuned for more videos in the future. Man, this smells good. Family's ready to eat. Stay tuned for more. Toothpicks.